quick revision video on storage cells. So some essentials first, storage cells or what we refer to as batteries use electrochemical reactions to produce electricity. Now you're often asked to compare storage cells with fuel cells, so I've put this one in. Fuel cells require a constant supply of the fuel and oxygen going to the cell. Storage cells contain all of the species or chemicals required within the cell. So if you think about a battery, everything's within the metal casing. When storage cells operate, the cell reaction occurs as determined by the standard electrode potentials of the half cells, and we say that the cell is discharging when it's operating. That word sometimes throws people. Some storage cells, not all, some storage cells are rechargeable, and that means the overall cell reaction is reversible. So basically when you're charging your phone up, the electricity that you're supplying to the phone is reversing the natural cell reaction in your phone battery. Advantages of storage cells, they have a high power density, so there's a lot of power in a small um, unit and they're quite cheap. Disadvantages, there's disposal issues if the battery contains toxic chemicals and also some are made from flammable chemicals, so the lithium used in your mobile phone batteries is potentially flammable and there was that case of the Samsung Galaxy S7 I think it was a few years ago bursting into flames. So all I've done is gone to the past papers and I've found four questions that sort of deal with storage cells so we'll have a look at those now. So the first one's about zinc carbon batteries which you find in your double A's and your triple A's. The half equations are shown below and we've got the electrode potentials for them. So we've got to calculate the voltage for the zinc carbon battery and write an equation for the overall cell reaction. So if you want to have a go at that, pause the video, play on when you're ready. So the voltage of the cell, we just take the most positive standard electrode potential and subtract from it the least positive. So it's going to be 0.75 minus minus 0.76, 1.51 volts. The equation for the overall reaction of the cell. So the way I process this is I look at the two standard electrode potentials. The most positive one runs in the forwards direction, least positive in reverse, and then quick check on the electrons. We've got two in each, so we don't need to multiply any of them out. And then we add the two equations together, but remember, if for this one, the one that runs in reverse, this is going to be a reactant and these are the products. So the overall equation looks like that. So here's the next one about a rechargeable battery, uh, the type used in car batteries. You've got the half equations like before and the standard electrode potentials. And we have to write the overall equation for the recharging process. So again, pause and play on when you're ready. So the way I'd tackle this is do what I did before. So that one's going to run forwards. That one's going to run in reverse. But we're not writing the natural reaction, the discharging reaction. We're actually flipping it in reverse. So effectively, we want this as the forwards reaction. And this is the reverse reaction. Quick check of the electrons, two on each side. So we don't need to multiply out. And then just add them together. So there's the recharging reaction and we need to simplify that down it's a little bit messy at the moment and it simplifies to that so here's the next one about mobile phone batteries again if you want to pause the video and then play on when you're ready now they haven't given us the standard electrode potentials they've instead they've given us the polarity of the electrodes so straight away i would be saying to myself well the cathode's positive and red cat so reduction always takes place at the cathode so therefore gaining of electrons is going to be taking place at this electrode so this one must be the one that runs in the forwards direction and therefore that's running in reverse quick check on the electrons one on each side and then remember so the reactants reactant product products so we get that can that be simplified yes it can it goes to that 
Now, surprisingly, they've missed out um, an obvious question to me anyway on this one, uh, whereby they could ask for a disadvantage or suggest a disadvantage of this type of cell. Lithium's a group one alkali metal and they are flammable. So we'll finish with this one. Nickel metal hydride cells being developed for possible use in cars. The overall reaction is given and for simplicity the metal shown as M, the metal hydride is MH. We've got the half equation at one electrode and we've basically got to deduce the other half equation. So again if you want to pause the video and play on when you're ready. So with this one what we need to do is basically come up with the other half equation so when we add it to this one we get that. So there's some obvious places to start. We need an MH in the overall reaction. There isn't any MH or M even in this one. So we need those. Next thing I would do is I would look at what we've got in this half equation, but we don't want in the overall. So we can see there's an OH minus there. So if we put OH minus as a reactant, and likewise, water is a reactant in this one, we haven't got it at all in this overall one, so it needs to be a product in that one. And then finally, we've got one electron in this one. We don't want any electrons, obviously, in the overall one, so we need one electron there. 